The CEO of TELUS loses his mind over the notion of increased competition. I'm Marco Perry. Welcome to the Perry Platform. The Canadian telecom industry has long been under scrutiny due to a variety of reasons. First of all, it's highly centralized. Second, there is no real competition. And third, the telecoms are milking the consumer's drive. These guys don't mind though. The CEOs of those companies make money hand over fist because you, as a consumer, have no other choice. Now, what happens though when the notion of increased competition comes up? Well, the CEO of TELUS showed us what exactly that would look like. He threw a hissy fit because increased competition is something he doesn't want to see. Shocker, right? These guys really do love their oligopoly. According to CBC, the Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission, wow, that's a mouthful, is a public organization who was hosting a discussion, talking about the idea of allowing other competitors to enter the market in a specific way. Now, before we touch more on that, I should just clear up what exactly the CRTC does. They regulate the broadcasting laws in Canada. They're supposed to be this independent organization that does things like figuring out the rules around broadcasting, who gets to use the towers, who gets to buy them, what the contracts look like, what can you publish, what can't you do. These guys are the ones calling the shots in that regard. Now, they were playing with the idea of mandating Canada's wireless companies, such as TELUS, Rogers and Bell, to open up their facilities to virtual network operators. And the acronym for these virtual operators is MVNO. So what are they? Essentially, they are a wireless service provider that does not own their own cell phone network. So you need these cell phone networks to provide cell service to customers. How can they operate without owning any? The answer is these MVNOs lease access to the networks from bigger telecoms at wholesale rates. So somebody like TELUS would buy the rights to a certain tower or a certain frequency, and the MVNOs would come along and say, hey, we want a piece of that. We'll pay you, but you have to sell to us at a discount because we all want a little chunk. We're both going to make money, and it'll increase competition. It's a win-win, right? Well, TELUS, the CEO, thinks not. He's looking at that picture and thinking, hmm, things are going pretty good right now. We don't want more players in the market trying to bring down costs. Forget that. And to be fair, I don't only want to single out TELUS here. Every other telecom company, their head honcho, their CEO, would feel the exact same way. So these MVNOs that the CRTC is trying to introduce, they would sell their services to customers based on a borrowed network that the companies would be forced to auction off based on this new discussion about these laws here. And in the United States, there are already a bunch of companies like that. But in Canada, they are not allowed to operate because we coddle telecom companies heavily. If we're going to be honest here, the telecom industry in Canada is virtually a heaven. The government does all it can. It bends over backwards to make sure that these companies remain extremely competitive and that foreign competition cannot penetrate the market. I can't really think of a better industry in Canada. Maybe the banks would count, but we really do a good job at making sure that these guys don't have to meet consumer demand because consumers have no other choices. Hello, oligopoly. Backed by the government. It's a terrible formula for the consumer, but for the companies and the shareholders, it's amazing. So now back to the story. The CEO of TELUS was in this conference where the idea of opening up the market came up. He said, if you do that, I'm going to cut $1 billion in spending. I'm going to remove 5,000 jobs over the next couple years, and I'm going to scale back philanthropy. Essentially an ultimatum here. He's saying if you do something I don't like, I'm going to screw the economy. If you compromise our market position, we're going to hit you hard. It's a common tactic. When you don't have a good argument, you resort to threats. You resort to trying to make the other party scared of you because of what you might do. If I was in charge here, I would tell Telos to eat nuts basically. The losses they threaten aren't even that severe, they're not that logical, and nothing's going to happen. They're just throwing a hissy fit. You want to threaten losing jobs? Here's a newsflash. The new MVNOs who will enter the market because of opening up the networks are going to create jobs to offset that. You want to cut back $1 billion in spending? Enjoy your stocks crashing to the ground and you losing that wonderful bonus. He's not going to do that. Here's an idea. 
How about instead of throwing around these random threats, you tell us why you think it's a bad idea. If you actually have good rationale, maybe you want to make the case that if we do this, we open the market to foreign competitors, Canadian industries are going to suffer. How about you say something like, we can't compete? How about you say something like, oh, it's going to delay X, Y, and Z? How about you give us some concrete rationale so we can see your point of view? When you come in guns blazing, waving around 5,000 jobs as the poker chip here, it doesn't come off as you having any logical backing. It comes off as a last resort because you know you're on the hot seat. It's funny to me too because we all know how those are going to play out from here. The CEO is going to issue an apology. He's going to be like, oh, I didn't think about the ramifications of what I said. We don't really mean that. Blah, blah, blah. What not? Because of the backlash that's going to be coming their way. But in reality, we did get a glimpse at the true inner workings of the mind of a big telecom CEO. They hate competition. They're going to coerce you into not introducing that. They don't care about these jobs they're waving around. They will cut those if it means keeping you in line. That's how the game is played. Now, my question is, when did it become okay for a corporation to try and hold the public hostage via an ultimatum? The CRTC is supposed to be an independent body who handles these matters here. You can't just come around trying to get them to do something because you want it very badly. You need rationale to back it up, and at the end of the day, it's not your call to make. You're just a company in the game. These guys make the rules here, and hopefully, they are unbiased. We'll see how the ruling goes. And another thing too, it seems to me that TELUS does not realize how blessed they have been for a very long time. The current market landscape is just heaven as I pointed out. They enjoy virtually no competition, and the Canadian consumer pays the price because of that. We get inflated plans that rank among the highest in the world, with little to no alternatives. TELUS then backs us up by saying further insanity. They say that they believe the market is already extremely competitive. What does extremely competitive mean to them? Are they using it as a synonym for not at all? There really are three players who own a bunch of subsidiaries. That's it. That is not extremely competitive by any stretch of the imagination. It's an oligopoly. I don't even know if they're aware of that, just playing dumb, or they're purposely lying. It can be any of those reasons. And the crazy thing here is that when they're concocting this message, do they really believe that anyone's going to buy into that? Is any Canadian really going to say, oh yeah, that's correct. Our telecom industry is extremely competitive. No, nobody with a logical mindset is going to come to that conclusion. There's no factor that will lead you to believe that. Then they double down. They say that prices are actually quite affordable, contrary to popular belief. No, popular belief is actually correct in this instance. Developing nations have cheaper plans with better service than us. They can Google it and they can find out the fallacies in their argument. It may be affordable in terms of anyone can technically get a plan in Canada because our standard of living is high, but when compared to foreign competition, to foreign alternatives, it's just robbery. There's no reason that prices should be as high as they are other than implicit collusion between the big three, Rogers, Bell, and TELUS. Did you know? that TELUS owns Kudo, Rogers owns Fido, Chatter, and Mobilicity, Bell owns Virgin Mobile. Remind me again how things are extremely competitive? It's all a facade. The game is rigged. They want you to believe it's competition, but all of these companies here all answer to the same big three. The big three are the ones calling the shots. This is actually a similar phenomenon that we see with gas stations. The ones that are closely approximated to each other, even though they are different companies, they understand that the consumer's choice is low. They understand that competing with each other is going to hurt each other's bottom lines. It actually makes sense to make your offerings identical. So, the consumer has to pick between one of you guys, but there isn't an edge given to one or the other. So it's basically a 50-50 coin toss as to who's going to get the business. And that's better than you guys going at it tooth and nail, reducing one person to ashes and the other profiting off of that. They know that there is riches to be made, by colluding and increasing prices and using that to benefit from the customer's lack of options. In a dumbed down example, we can think of it like this. So me and my partner, we're both selling water. The market rate for water is $1. But somehow in this market, in your community, only us two can sell you water. Now I can try and take all the business by making my water 90 cents. 
then you, he's might re, he might retaliate and make his 85, and we'd enter a price war. It would probably get to the point where we are making only a small margin off of the cost. If the bottle cost 47 cents, then maybe we stop trying to kill each other at 50 cents. So I can make all this money selling my water for 50 cents, but it comes at a loss to my profit margin. I have to be extremely competitive to get that market share. But what's really going on is more like this. We look at each other and we say, hey, it's only me and you. People don't have a choice here. If they want water, it's going to come from one of us two. We can try and set the price a little bit higher. And I might say, well, I could probably get more customers by outbidding you. And they might say, well, what if we just increase the prices and we generate more revenue? We're going to lose a little bit of quantity. But we can make up for it in terms of raw value. So we set the price of the water at $2. Now we can profit off of that. And at the same time, we'd both survive. And we can give you the fake impression of competition. That's what's going on here. This is why opening up the market and having more competitors is key. Because when, when it's only two or three people, it's easier to collude. When there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, it's harder to cooperate like that. Somebody might just go rogue and say, forget this, I'm going to lower my prices. Then you all have to adjust to that. When it's a small group, you can easily concentrate power. Now, the CBC writes that Canada's largest wireless providers have been united in their rejection from mandated MVNOs. Of course. What do we expect? That they would not be against it? Who cares about the telecoms though? It's the people's opinion that we need to worry about. These guys don't want new players in the market. Of course they're going to join together and say it's a bad idea. They're not giving any good reasons for it though. They're just giving the sentiment, the odd threat here and there. But when it comes down to it, there is no logical reason why we shouldn't introduce some competition into the market. On one hand, these telecoms may stand to lose market share. They may lose some profit. But the consumers gain because prices will likely go down. It's a balancing act here and whose side do you want to be on? The corporation or the people? Now what TELUS stands for is somewhat seeming to me the opposite of capitalism. People will try to label this issue as a concrete example of it going wrong. And I do think it's gone wrong, but that's the key there. This is not a good example of capitalism at its best. The markets are not free. The consumers don't have any real choices here. There is implicit collusion. The barriers to entry are so high that nobody can penetrate the market and has created this oligopoly. Perfect competition is more so what we should be striving for in the ideal capitalist society. The tragic part about all of this is that Canadians pay the price for these lackluster policies every month when their phone bills come around. When a corporation can threaten the government, that's a sign of distress in the system. To me, it's painfully clear what needs to be done. If the CRTC buckles and gives into TELUS, that entire organization, the CRTC, needs to be investigated. You cannot give in to the demands of a whiny brat and expect that to be good for the future. There is no logical argument for bowing down here. All you'll do is set a precedent. And what happens the next time? The next time Rogers doesn't like what you do, their CEO is going to say, hey, we're going to cut 6,000 jobs and take away a billion dollars of spending. And then what are you going to do? Okay, we give in to that. Then the next time something happens, Bell's going to say, hey, we're going to cut 7,000 jobs and you better give in to our demands. Then you create a disastrous cycle where you don't have the power anymore. The CRTC becomes useless and the real true decision makers become the corporations. That's not good for anybody. The CRTC has no choice here. They have to reject the idea and go forward with the proposal to allow increased competition. In a sense, it's almost like TELUS made the choice for them. If they then throw the hissy fit and said they were calm, if they give rationale, then the CRTC might have a choice to make. They would weigh the arguments and say, okay, is it good, is it bad, let's figure it out. But now that they've gone crazy, they've tied the organization's hands. You can't show weakness now. And if they do, I'll just be mind boggled. That would be insane to me. You can't buckle here, so the choice is clear. Competition should be on the way in Canada now. That is assuming though that the organization, the CRTC, is not either corrupt or incompetent and that might be a lot to ask from one of these public organizations. We'll see how it plays out. And the federal government also has a hand to play here. They've really been playing softball on this issue for far too long. The consumers, the people, want the markets to be opened up, but every election cycle, it's a non-issue. This is an easy way to win votes, so I wonder, what's the reason for that? Is it because of campaign donations? I guarantee you that's a part of it. These telecoms have deep pockets, and they're going to make sure they do what they can to maintain 
their competitive edge here. They're going to be funding campaigns on the promise that the politician is not going to do something crazy and destroy the market. And Trudeau has done something though. He's introduced these, these visions for the future where prices are going down for Canadians and whatnot, but his aims are so low. He's not really trying to make things as affordable as foreign competition per se, but a slight decrease in Canada. I think that isn't the way it should be. We want to be as competitive as possible to make internet access as affordable for everyone. It's, it's virtually, virtually bordering on a human right at this point. The aim should be try to make it as close to free, but Trudeau is going that direction, but slowly. I wonder why that is. What's the rationale for that? Maybe the telecoms are using their influence again. We already see here the CEO of TELUS using his power against the CRTC saying that, hey, I am personally going to cut jobs right now if you do this to me. Trudeau's fell victim to that same line of argumentation before with SNC. When he got brought up on these corruption scandal charges, he said, I'm just trying to save jobs. and That's why I was trying to back up SNC. SNC committed a crime, but we don't want to burden the Canadian workers. And there might be a case to make with that, but either way, he's backing up a corrupt company because he feels that the loss of jobs is too much. And we see TELUS is willing to dangle that same bargaining chip over the head of the CRTC. I guarantee you that same talking point has come up with the government. And if anyone in government is thinking the same way that Trudeau did with the SNC scandal, I can easily envision how a agreement would work out with them. They would say something like, okay, don't cut those jobs. We're going to give in to your demands, but you have give us a little bit of wiggle room. Maybe let's make a promise that cell phone prices are going to go down 10%. You're still killing people by charging premiums upwards of 100%. So you lose a little bit, but you still get to maintain your competitive advantage. We all win here. And to me, that's bogus. Of course, that's just speculation, but we see the proof here. Nothing has changed. The Canadian consumer continues to be shafted by these telecoms and nobody is helping us out. Not the government, not the CRTC, and all I can do is wonder why. So, that now brings us to the end of our conversation for today. If you enjoy the content, be sure to leave a review and share. That'll help us grow. And you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Perry Platform. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.